Right. And uh, it's been a super transition because being behind the camera to in front of the camera, and I'm like super introverted, so like it was like a big mind boggle to mm. get in front of the camera, but it was a need for like what we're doing, so. Yeah, no, I've seen your, your, your thing on uh, Instagram, like, you know, uh, being the media for introverts and oh, yeah, power. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's crazy because I, like, I wouldn't expect you're an introvert the way yeah. you're acting, but it's kind of funny because I used to be an introvert too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, like, the last thing I want to do is try and talk. Don't yeah. talk to me. I'm like, you know, like, just let it's me do tough. my thing. It's tough. But like, you know, especially because I, uh, I I chose a sales route when yeah. growing up. Yeah. And sales, you have to be you like have an to be introverted. Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. And the reason I chose that is because racing, um, I can't go to, I don't have, I don't, I don't know, like my pops, like, hey, give me ha- half a million dollars for racing, you yeah. know? So I have to figure out how half am I going to get money for, and that's cheap for racing. That's cheap. That's cheap for racing. Okay. You know what? <laughs> We're going to get right into it, guys. Are we good? Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, all good? All good? Yeah, take a second. All right, bet. I'm gonna get into the racing right now. All right, welcome to another episode of the Black Is the New Rich podcast. And today we got a very special guest. Um, he's doing very something very special in the community, and it's uh, innovative. I think it's groundbreaking, and it's gonna help a lot of young people. But I don't want to keep on talking. Can you please introduce yourself? How you guys doing? Thank you again for having me on the podcast. My name is Toka Murphy. I am the founder and president of Rentproof, and I'm also on the on the journey to become a professional race car driver. Oh, wow. Okay, let's get into that. Before we get into Rentproof, actually, can you quickly just explain what Rentproof is? Yeah, Rentproof is simply my business, and what we do is we report rental payments to Equifax. Okay. So that means that on your credit report, you're gonna have a trade line indicating your rental history. Mm-hmm. Now, why is that good? It's because you can simply build your credit history by paying your rent. Uh, and, and in this economy, obviously for the younger generation, a lot of us are young, uh, sorry, a lot of us are renting, especially in the GTA. But uh, I'm gonna hold that thought there. I wanna go into the racing. Mm. I wanna go to the lead up. Um, when did racing start for you? I think racing has always been a part of me. I've been a huge car enthusiast ever since I could remember. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking about that guy, if you, a car goes down the street, I'm naming the exact car, the model, the year, the engine, everything. Wow, wow, wow. wow. But I think I've always been so fascinated with cars of more of what it can do, uh, like the power it can provide. And I've always wanted to be a person who is limited by the car. The what car is not limited that? by me. So, you know, if you see an old man driving a Ferrari, you know, no diss to the old man driving <laughs> the Ferrari, but that car is limited by the driver. Okay. That car is not going to be driven to its full potential because the driver can't handle that car. Okay. Okay. But I want to be the opposite. I want to be the person where I'm limited by the car. Mm-hmm. There's no car that can provide me enough performance for me to fully max my potential wow i never actually heard about it like that geez because i've watched racing a little bit growing up but i don't really know too much about it so like how did you like get into it what was like that turning point for you to like actually get into it because i know you said you were interested but i i feel like growing up that's not really a popular sport so how did you get into it so i've been doing um a lot of car reviews Mm -hmm. for my buddy's uh previous youtube channel called canadian car culture nice and I got into it when I saw how real it was. Mm -hmm. Meaning, you know, you always love a supercar, you always love mansions, but it's always like a pipe dream. But till you're actually touching it, till you're actually driving a car, you're like, if I'm I'm 16 years old driving a Ferrari for, it's not mine, it's a car review, but I'm doing it. Why not try and become a race car driver? Okay, wow. So take me uh, behind the mindset of a race car driver, because honestly, it's super interesting to me. Like for me, I, I, I'm a scared driver, so I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't speed. I don't like, I don't drive reckless. How is it being in in that uh, driver's seat? Well, it's actually much more safer than you think it is. Really? Um, everyone's always saying how exhilarating it is. I'm sure because that's how the movies perceive it, right? Like mm-hmm. Fast and Furious, like you're always in a rush. But to me, it's actually the quite opposite. It's more of something that's more tranquil. Really? You know, it's as calm as sailing on a boat. Because you want to be as calm as possible, so your mind is as clear as possible. So this way, you'll be able to focus and, and react as fast as possible. Because if you're in high, in a, you know, in a high type of your energy's going, your your head's flowing, you're always feeling like the aggressor. You're not going to be able to react as fast enough. You're not going to be able to just flow. You're not going to be able to smooth. And most of all, like racing is like life. You have to be consistent. You know, you might, you might not be the fastest lap time. But if you're consistent, you have a better chance of winning than just having the fastest lap time. Well, and I, I'm guessing you having a lot more things to pay attention uh, in the race because you have all these uh, race car drivers that are going crazy speeds, and you have to uh, sl- you have to like slow down, brake, accelerate, and so I'm, I'm guessing 
being calm allows you to see everything exactly and just like you said there's so much going on so the other drivers it's your performance on track it's your turning points it's your input for the brakes the gas and on top of that the wear uh, how, how your brakes perform because lap over lap your brakes are depreciating and then lap over lap your tires are depreciating mm -hmm. so you got to feel where you're at at all times and be able to adapt to the current situation. Did you know that the black dollar leaves the community within six minutes? That's why we are excited to introduce the new Black is the New Rich app designed for the black community to be more intentional about where we spend our dollar. The directory consists of mostly financial services like real estate agents, financial advisors, tax consultants, mortgage agents, videographers, photographers, and many more. With our app, you can easily find and connect with quality services that are owned by black entrepreneurs. And to ensure the integrity of the service on our app, all directory members are held accountable if they receive multiple bad reviews. Our mission is to circulate the dollar and provide quality services to our community. Download the Black is the New Rich app today and start investing in your Okay, wow. So tell me, because I know we we're talking a little bit off cam, like what does it take um, to be a race car driver funding wise? Because like, for example... Uh, I play basketball and a lot of my peers, they went to university, they get scholarships, they get funding through scholarships, obviously, and then they go, some of us have been uh, gone to the NBA and then everything's kind of paid for. Mm -hmm. How's it for uh, racing? Yeah, so just like you said, racing is not very popular, especially for people in our community, mainly reason because of the huge financial gap there is to get into racing. Okay. So when it seems so obtainable, why even try? I mean, professional karting can be upwards of $100,000 a year. And karting is something people do when, you know, as young as six years old, sometimes even younger, I'm seeing nowadays. Wow. And um, so funding wise, it's usually the average race car driver will have their resources. Okay. They'll have family members, family friends, um, whatever the case is, they have a handout basically given to them to be able to help fund them for racing. They're still putting in the work, don't get me wrong. They're the ones on the track, you know, practicing, thriving to get better. But they were given the opportunity to get onto the track by the funding. Yeah. Okay, so how can uh, the community help you uh, get this funding? Well, you see, we live in a new day and era, like where it's all about, the biggest commodity we live in is about attention, mm -hmm. right? We're seeing four-year-olds, six-year-olds on YouTube making millions a month attention is of YouTube. These days. Attention is a currency. So for me, I've, I'm trying to figure out how I can use that uh, to my advantage to help go racing. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, hopefully create like a blueprint so this way it's more accessible for anyone who's interested in racing. Yeah. Right? Like it's, yes, I'm, it's about me right now, but the whole overall grand scheme of it is way bigger than me. Okay. It's about more providing more accessibility, providing a blueprint. I'm even seeing people do what I do. Uh, I started doing like YouTube videos on my, my racing journey, trying to get more attention, yeah. and I'm seeing other people do that now. Oh, my friends are telling me, oh, they're copying. I'm like, nah, nah that's nah. what it's all about. You're just trailblazing. Exactly, and um, so for funding-wise for me and how it would help with the community, it's just simply like, let me know, like put your eyes on my racing career. And if you don't like my content, let me know so I can make it better, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, 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 so yeah. Um, it's more about just showing love, to be honest. Okay. And if you're interested in show the love. Okay. Like some people will just scroll by, they might not like it and that's cool. But if you scroll by, you like it, show hit love. That, hit that, hit that <laughs> like know? button, hit that subscribe button. It don't cost comment. nothing to show love. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. So I wanna get into Rent Proof. Um, honestly, when I when I seen you on the contest, I was like, wow, this is something different and innovative. Um, again, can you explain what Rent Proof is and how did you um, get there? Yeah, for sure. So again, Rent Proof, we report rental payments to Equifax. So what that means is on your next credit report, you're gonna have a trade line indicating your rental history. Now this provides the average consumer a way to build their credit without incurring any debt. You see, the only way to build credit is to take on debt, meaning, for example, if I wanna build my credit with you, I put, hey, can I borrow $20? Yeah. I'll pay back next week. Mm -hmm. I pay you back next week, you trust me now, right? Yeah. But now the problem is a lot of credit rebuilding programs are like 10 bucks a month, 15 bucks a month. Yeah. So I paid you back $10. Now you trust me with $20. Yes. So I'm gonna come back to you next week. Hey, can I borrow $10,000? Oh, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I, I might trust you at 20, but I don't know about 10,000. Okay. And that's the thing. So the credit building programs, yes, they do help to a certain degree, but if you are able to use your largest monthly expense to show your credit worthiness, mm -hmm. why not? Mm -hmm. And that's how the banks work. It's an algorithm. They just input your information to a system and then they'll let you know if you got approved or declined. Wow. 
So why don't we take advantage of that? How did this all start? Where does this idea come from? This is genius to me. <laughs> so I guess it all started with racing. Yeah. Once I realized the huge uphill battle racing is financially, I've realized that I can't do a regular job. I mean, I, I went to school for engineering. Yeah. I dropped out first year to pursue, I guess, entrepreneurship. And um, the reason I did that is because I know that even if I was a very successful engineer, I'm making, let's say, $600,000 a year, I'll be too busy working to even go racing. Oh. And on top of that, I can't spend half a million a year on racing when I'm only making $600,000 a year. Yeah. Because it just wouldn't be ideal. So you need more money. <laughs> so I chose the entrepreneurship life. And um, then from there, I realized how real, like how I just had a whole new stigma about what money is. Because in school, especially if you do you know economics, they tell you that money is scarce, okay. right? Money is scarce, it's limited supply or whatever the case is, Which it's is scarce. True. But the thing is, you know, I go racing, you know, I'm coming back from the co-op, I go to the racetrack. I'm seeing guys in Ferraris, Lamborghinis, they're wearing heavy wrists, you know, they got big whips. And then I go back to the end and I just see the huge contrast. And I'm like, well, money can't be scarce yeah. because this guy got more money than he even needs. Yeah. So money is clearly abundant, mm -hmm. but what's scarce is the access to money. Mm -hmm. The only difference between some people is they don't have the access to money. Now, don't get me wrong, you have to work for that access, but there's a huge gap where people aren't getting the credit that they deserve. And then I've worked in property management. I've also been an f &I manager. So I've had the experience in real estate and I've had the experience with credit and people's personal finances. And I've realized that since it's just a system you're inputting information in. Literally. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. And, um, and then from there, that system's telling you you've declined or approved. Why not take advantage of that system? Why don't we say, look, the way your rent works is called an installment type of loan. Okay. So if you sign a one-year lease for $2,000, you're theoretically in debt $24,000. Oh, for the year. For the year. Okay. You, you signed a contract. Yes. yes. You say you're going to live there for 12 months. It's $2,000 a month. So you're theoretically in debt $24,000 with your landlord. So that is debt. You're giving the property up front. You're paying monthly payments for it. Yeah. Now, when you get a car, it's the same thing. Yeah. You sign a car, they say it's $20,000. Yeah. It's over four years. Yeah. You're paying 400 bucks a month. You're giving the car up front and you're paying monthly payments for it. Mm -hmm. With that principle alone, I was able to get my partnership with Equifax to allow for rent reporting. Oh, so I'm now, now I'm seeing like the correlation. Like for example, car payments come up on your your credit report. Exactly. So I'm guessing you went in there like, hey, come on, if you have a car payment, why not rent? Exactly. And unfortunately, when I went there in the first attempt, <laughs> yeah, they, they, they shot it. me down. <laughs> this is back in 2016, you know, because Equifax USA does it, yeah. but Equifax Canada does not do it mm -hmm. at the time. And uh, it's two separate entities. So just because Equifax Canada is doing something doesn't mean Equifax USA is going to do it. Just like if you chose to move to America tomorrow, you have to build your credit history in America. Okay. Your Canadian credit history does not transcend to America. Yes. So with that, uh, I wasn't able to start Remproof at the time. But then, you know, I was very persistent. And in 2019 is when they changed the bylaws to allow for rent reporting. And as you know, I was one of the first ones through that door. Okay. Wow. So... What, what do you need in order to go through this program? Are we talking about uh, rent, proof. rent proof? Yes. Oh, well, so how can people get like started today or like what, what what's happening or is it what's going on? Very simple to be enrolled in rent proof. Yes. You simply have to rent. OK. And then all you have to do is sign up on our website and uh, then every month you'll get your rent reported to Equifax. That's it. Simple. <laughs> is there fees? Is there like how, how does it work? Yeah, we charge five dollars a month. Um, <laughs> so it's like $60 a year, yeah. but the way I look at it, even one of my homies were like, $5 a month, come on, make that cheaper. I'm like, how much are you spending on, tw on Netflix? Yeah, yeah. So you want to spend $20 well, that, well, on Netflix? That's cheap. That, when, I, when I heard it, that was cheap. Exactly. Um, but to the people that might oppose to that being cheap, I'll be like, okay, how much are you paying for your Netflix, your okay. Disney Plus, right? Your Apple Music, okay. right? your Spotify. I'm sure it's more than $5 a month. So what's more important to you? Your entertainment or your financial future? 100%, 100%. Honestly, I feel like this is such an innovative thing because especially people around our ages that are living in the GTA specifically, um, we have to rent right now. And this is a way that we can now be rewarded for for renting, right? Mm -hmm. So what's the next step for Rent Proof? So I think right now the next step is to actually put more spotlight on the awareness of the importance of credit. Okay. You see, we're going through a huge economic turmoil. Yes. Our generation 
is taking on more debt at a rapid pace than ever. On top of that, we're filing more insolvencies than ever. If you look at last Sorry, year, what does that mean? What does that mean? Filing for insolvencies is filing for bankruptcy, oh, filing okay. for consumer proposals, mm -hmm. right? And if you look at the reports from Stats Canada from last year, nearly half of all insolvencies filed were from millennials. Oh, geez. And to be honest, if you understand their mindset, you can't blame them. Yeah. So if you want to save up for a down payment for a house, right, it's going to take you, depending on your income, whatever, but let's say it's going to take you around 20 years, mm -hmm. right? If you file for bankruptcy, that bankruptcy is only going to stay on your record for seven years. Okay. So what's stopping me from racking up my credit card debt, file for bankruptcy or consumer proposal, and then starting from scratch? Because it's going to take me 20 years to save up for a down payment. Yeah. So by the time I get my down payment, it's going to be off my record. So why, why not? not? Why not? Is there a myth behind that the seven years and then you start your credit again? Because I'm hearing different things. Can you explain that? Like I'm hearing it doesn't really go away or it's people still, uh, sorry, credit bureaus still see that. How does that even work? Yeah, so it depends on the situation, of course. But whenever you file for insolvency, yes. there's going to be a public record on your credit report. Okay. Now that public record on your credit report is going to stay there for minimum seven years. Mm -hmm. And uh, in certain cases, it can be longer. And in the cases where it does not get removed off your record, it'll still be there, but you'll be in the capacity to build your credit again. So lenders do take that into consideration. And uh, nine times out of 10, after the seven years, they, don't, they act like it's not even there. Mm. But again, different lenders, different creditors, based on what you're borrowing, okay. right? And how much specifically, and what the money is used for. And then is it unsecured debt or secured debt, yes. there's different variations towards it. Okay, amazing. So I wanna get into a little bit of credit 101, because since your, your rent proof is about credit, I wanna help people listening build their credit or if they have damaged credit, mm -hmm. help, help get back to where it needs to be. Um, when it comes to paying off debt, what do you advise? Do you advise to like pay it off all right away or do you pay some of it? Like, What do you advise? I advise that people should definitely first understand their financial situation, right? Because there's two approaches to debt, the two mm -hmm. classic approaches. Okay. The first approach is called the avalanche method, and the second approach is called the snowball method. What, can you break those down? <laughs> so the avalanche method is just like how you were saying before, pay it off as much as you can, as fast as you can, right? Okay. Get rid of the debt as quick as you can. Now the other method, snowball method is, well, picture a snowball going down the hill. It builds up and builds up uh, and builds up. So just pay off what you can over time Okay. is a snowball method versus okay. the avalanche method, pay it as much off as you can, as fast as you can. Now, both, both aren't wrong, both do work, it just depends on your personal financial situation. So if you're in the capacity where you have a very low overhead, meaning you, you, know, you just have rent and your basic necessities, and uh, you, um, of course if you have debt, your, your minimum payments, then just put as much as your income into it, okay. right? Um, but again, if you're, a fam if, you're, if you're older, you have a family, you have, you have responsibilities, yeah. you can't you can't do that because it'd be more wiser to have some money in an emergency fund because you have people depending on you. Okay. So that's where the snowball method would be more uh, advisable. Um, but again, it would have to be dependent on people's each individual situation. Okay. But again, people need to first understand what debt really is, right? Yes. Y you made an obligation to borrow money, giving and paying it back. So you have to hold true to your word and that's what credit's all about, right? Credit's like, okay, you said, uh, if you give me $50,000, you'll pay me back X amount and this is how much. So that's where your credit is. Pay it back when you can. It's a trust system. But of course, stuff happens, right? And especially now we're seeing predatory interest rates on late payments, um, and uh, it becomes so heavy where the interest overcomes the principal. Oh, that's and crazy. that's when you come underwater, and that's when people are like, well, I can't pay for this anymore, and they file for bankruptcy, Forget, yeah. and then consumer proposals. But the, the worst thing you can do is just put under the rug. Pretend okay. it's not there is the worst thing you can do. Okay. Because you might put on the rug, but the interest is accumulating, and accumulating, and accumulating. Okay, so when it comes to credit card utilization, I've heard different numbers. I've heard 30%, I've heard 20%, I have 40%. Um, first of all, what does that even mean? And what do you think is a good rule of thumb? Yeah, so credit utilization is how much credit you're using versus the how much credit is available yeah. to you. Okay. So for example, if I have a $10,000 credit card and I use $3,000 out of my $10,000 credit card, that means my utilization is 30%. Now, again, your credit mainly matters when you're borrowing money. So if you're in this situation where you don't care about borrowing money, you have everything you need, 
then you, utilization is not a huge factor to you. You know, your credit score is not a huge factor to you because if utilization is the only thing that's impacting your score, once you lower utilization in the next two or three reporting cycles, meaning two to three months when you update your credit report, it'll, it'll just go up once you pay it down. Missed payments is a different story. Missed payments is going to be on your record, right? But for utilization, rule of thumb is if you are looking to borrow money, whether you're getting a credit card, line of credit, mortgage, or a car loan, try and keep your utilization below 30%. Okay. But if you're not in the position where you're borrowing money, utilization theoretically does not matter. Okay. But of course, be co be very wary based on your the loan that you're given that you don't want to be excessively paying for your interest. Okay. And uh, as I understand it, basically when uh, credit when uh, loan uh, people that loan you money, they look at your credit utilization. If you're going too high, they basically they're basically saying, "Oh, well, this person is their life is funded on their credit card." So it, they they're probably a little bit more risky. Is that Yeah, it? it's more in the sense like let's say I'm going to I'm asking you to borrow $20, right? But then you could see that I already owe him 50 bucks and him $100. And you're like, well, am I going to re-get this $20 back? Mm -hmm. Like, that's how you have to always break it down. Break it down to person to person. Because that's how, that's how the credit system works. So before you saying, yes, I'll give you $20, like, okay, but you, I, you could also see that you owe him 100 him 50 him 60 So then are you gonna, you make that judgment call. Are you still going to give me that $20? Yeah. <laughs> so it's less likely. But if you see that I only owe another guy $10, like, okay, fine, here's $20. Mm, okay, makes sense. So when it comes to disputing items on your credit report, how should we go about that? Number one is just reach out to the credit bureau itself. Okay. So in Canada, there's two credit bureaus. If you see um, something that you don't agree with on your credit report from either TransUnion or Equifax, those are the two here in Canada, contact them right away on their website. They have customer support and they're very uh, supportive in that sense too. And then usually they'll walk you through the process based on your dispute. Okay. So um, they, they walk you through. So for example, if you have a dispute on a car payment, yes. let's say it, it says a missed payment in credit report, but you have proof that you paid it on time. Okay. All you have to do is file that dispute with the credit bureau, provide them the proof when they do ask for it, and they'll walk you through the situation. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I've heard. Are you supposed to like write them a letter? And if they don't write, if they don't send you uh, a response, that means you can. I don't know. That it disappears. Like, take me through that myth, please. I, I haven't heard that <laughs> one before. But no, they they, they definitely do response. Uh, you don't even have to write them a letter nowadays. You can just send them an email mm -hmm. uh, or even a phone call. And uh, they'll because everyone's situation is different based on the type of dispute and based on the person's consumer profile report. So first thing is again, just reach out to them. Let them know this is your issue and they'll advise you on the next best steps. Okay, okay. And it, let's say I have multiple credit cards and I'm not using one of them. Is, mm -hmm. it, is it smart to close them or what, what do you think? So this is where it comes all based on opinion. Okay. In my personal opinion, I don't think uh, you should close it if you don't need it. Why? Because you always wanna have access to money. True. You don't know what could happen in your life. True. And let's say all of a sudden you need to spend an extra $2,000. It's very important. It actually, it's more important than ever. Because I don't know if you know, but majority of Canadians, one in three Canadians, right? That's a third of our population. Yeah, that's a lot. They're $200 or less away from financial insolvency every month. So if out of the blue, you have a 5K expense that you need to make, the average Canadian or a third of the population can't even afford $200 or less. So if you have access to money, this way you at least have a foundation, a safety net. Wow. Okay. So I would not close my credit card even if I'm not using it. Okay. And how, like when it comes to opening the credit card, how should we go about that? Do we, are we playing a little bit of defense or when do you start to open another credit card? Yeah, it depends on your situation. So um, let's say you're opening up a bank account and if you need a credit card, then inquire for a credit card. Okay. But sometimes when you open up a bank account, based on your credit history, they might actually pre-approve you. The best is peer approvals. Yes. Why? Because there's no inquiries. Okay. So on your credit report, you have a section called inquiries. Okay. And what an inquiry means is every time you've asked for money. Yes. Right? And why is that important? It's because let's say I asked for money from you, you said no. I asked for money from him, he said no, and then I go to Julian. And then Julian would say, okay, these two people said no to you, why would I say yes? It becomes a risk factor. Uh, okay. That's how inquiries work. Is that, sorry, is, not to cut you off, is that the hard and soft? Exactly, okay, hard so, and soft. So can you uh, explain those terms? Because yeah, so an inquiry, there's two types. There's a hard inquiry and a soft inquiry. So a hard inquiry is just as it says, it's gonna be a hard inquiry, meaning it's gonna be stated on your credit report. Okay. So every time someone pulls your credit report, they'll be able to see that you made an inquiry. Okay. Now a soft inquiry means they're pulling a soft check on your credit, so meaning they're not gonna see your full credit profile, but they will see some certain parts that they that's sufficient enough for them to make a decision. 
And now that soft check means it's not going to show as an inquiry on your credit report. Meaning if someone else pulls your credit report, they're not going to know that you made an inquiry Makes from sense. this type of lender or creditor. Okay. What are you seeing from young people just in terms of their credit right now and getting ahead financially? What are you seeing? I'm seeing a new lifestyle. Yeah. So back in the day, the flex was you want a house and you want a car, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, was the, that was the flex. Simple. But now, nice and simple. But now it's so unobtainable. And on top of that, we're seeing a lot of unwanted problems that comes with that. Mm -hmm. Especially in day and age like now, we're seeing people who buy homes and you know, they have to take out a home equity line of credits, they have to refinance their home, and point is, they're extending the amortization table. What does that mean? So the amortization table is basically how long it will take to pay off your house. Okay. And by extending your amortization a table, that means you're gonna take longer to pay off your house. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of 10, people aren't paying off their homes in their, in their lifetime. That's crazy. And then on top of that, it's becoming more frequent where it might even take two lifetimes to pay off the home. Now what that means is that Yes, you're a homeowner, but the landlord's your bank, mm -hmm. right? And people are like, well, if I have to get a lot of cash, put it into a home, and then pay more than rent, just pay my, uh, my mortgage, and then upkeep it, because it's not my responsibility, and there's taxes on top of it, maybe no, yeah. right? People buy homes because they want to start a family. Yeah. But in our generations, we're seeing less families, less marriages, right? So the flex doesn't look like it wants to be a home and a car anymore. Maybe the car is still there, <laughs> but the bigger flex is people want freedom. Mm. The freedom to say, I want to go to Cancun tomorrow. True. I want to go to Tulum next week, true, right? True, they want to be able to get up and go. Yeah. And they just want to be free. So that's why we're seeing all this hybrid working or offline working. And that freedom still costs money, but it allows them to be flexible. Okay. So, so sorry, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. that's basically the new flex I'm seeing in the new lifestyle. And with that, I'm seeing a lot of people not really caring about buying homes just because we're seeing homes are more for family. Yeah. There are still some condo buying, of course, but yeah. Homes, like single family homes, I'm seeing people like the our generations, yeah. it's not really a priority anymore. We don't care about saving. Okay, so when it comes to like renting or buying, what do you see and what do you suggest right now? It all, again, it depends where and your own personal lifestyle. True. So f like for example, me, I'm going all in on my business. Yeah. So the last thing I want to do is save for uh, a home, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it depends, are you gonna buy to live in? Are you buying as an investment That's, property? Mm -hmm. uh, are you gonna buy in a city like Toronto? Or are you gonna buy somewhere outside of the city? Um, but at all, at all based on your lifestyle. Figure out what you want, you know, where do you work, mm -hmm. right? Do you wanna buy something? Do you wanna buy something because you want a family? True. Buying from an investment property? Figure out your end goal. You need to, you, if you know this guy named Simon Sinek, he's a huge, um, uh, author. Uh, he's also a motivational speaker, if you will. And he has a book called, uh, I, find, I think it's called Find Your Why. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, basically, that's what everyone needs to make your own decision. Yeah. Because that's why I think people will always ask for advice because they don't really know what they really want. True. So if you find out what you want, you find yourself, you'll be able to figure out what's best for you. But again, right now, renting is definitely more popular. Why? Home <laughs> and affordability is yeah. on the Huge exponential rise, crazy. but now we're seeing because homes are so expensive, people are refinancing for their homes, meaning their mortgage is more expensive. So if your mortgage is more expensive, your rent is going to be more expensive because now they're trying to supplement their expensive mortgage by their investment property by increasing their rent. And especially if their property is not limited by rent control, well, it's very tough for uh, the renter to keep up with uh, the landlord's demands. Wow, wow. So Toka, I have a question for you. When it's all said and done, how do you want to be remembered? I definitely want to be remembered as just someone who paved the way. Mm -hmm. Someone who broke boundaries and showed that this is actually more accessible than I thought it was. You know, I want kids from all types of backgrounds to be like, you know what? If Tog was able to raise cards, I should be able to raise cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And on top of that, especially, it falls in line with Renproof. Renproof is all about financial inclusion, economic empowerment, serving the underserved. And um, basically, I just want people be remembered as someone providing opportunity. I love that, I love that. Leveling the playing field. Yeah, 100%, close that wealth gap a little bit. Um, the next two questions we ask every guest on the show. And the first one, you don't have to say any names, but I wanna know, what's the best advice that you received and what's the worst advice you received? Well, I guess the best advice I received is definitely that money is not scarce. Mm -hmm. It's abundant. Mm -hmm. It's abundant when as air you, we breathe. When did you start to realize that? Uh, the first time I was on the racetrack. Really? Racing is a type of sport where a race car driver crashes a Lamborghini. Yeah, a Lamborghini. A Lamborghini race car, right? Mm -hmm. He smokes a stogie 
while his second Lamborghini is getting un, uh, unhooked from the trailer. Wow, I never the track. ever thought about it like that. So I'm just like, there's no way money can be scarce. Yeah. Ha- and especially if we live in a very fortunate country like Canada, yeah. money is abundant. Mm-hmm. You're telling me that the people who have more money than they even need? So it can't be scarce. It's now definitely you can abundant. crash a Lamborghini and chill out and the next one will Smoke be- a stogie <laughs> even. He's, not even. he's chilling and chilling, yeah. right? And um, so that's when I just realized, yeah, money is definitely abundant. Amazing. Like it's abundant, abundant. It's just as abundant as the air we breathe. Okay, and the worst advice? The worst advice would probably be, um, I remember in high school, uh, one of the teachers told me, get, just get into um, something where you can make money fast and uh, pay your bills. And it, I, she meant well when she told me that, of course, mm-hmm. but more in the sense that she, she was saying from her standpoint, because she probably had a stressful environment, and she probably p- thought that's what happens to generations and like the type of school I went to, and you know she knew the area I was from. So, but what that does is it, it limits you. It makes you feel like, oh, this is the most I can do. And you know, a lot of people our age growing up, that's what they experience from people who are older than them. Mm-hmm. So if you're if your OG is telling you this, you're gonna think, okay, well, he said that, so I'm probably this is the my my most I, I'm gonna amount to. Mm-hmm. And I just think that. Um, it's more in the sense that they're, you know, end of the day, we're human beings. We're not animals where we only have a nature to hunt, kill, sleep, right? Yes, we yes, have yes. the, we have options. 100%. And um, make the most of your options, you know? I actually, I'm going to come up with another question. Yeah. Talk to me briefly about your team and how you guys push each other and how many of you guys are there? I mean, so Remproof is just basically me, to be honest. Okay. Um, but I do have very supportive friends um, and family, of course, who pick my brain on rent proof who are always actually who are always questioning me playing devil's advocate that's no, good you know that's exactly good. That's not good. in the sense to discourage me but mm-hmm. they're they're testing me right mm-hmm. in a good way in a very healthy and positive way and they're always playing devil's advocate on me so this way i can see all the different types of angles where people come at me and um it, it works because anytime i'm asked a question about rent proof on the spot I'm able to provide a sound and solid answer. Yeah, even on this podcast, you're sharp, <laughs> you're sharp with it. Thank That's you. dope. Uh, do you have any mentors or online mentors that you look up to? Yeah, I definitely look up to a lot of um, business moguls. Uh, Ray Dalio is the first one that comes to mind. Mm-hmm. He's uh, one of the greatest when it comes to finances. Um, Ray Dalio is definitely a huge inspiration to mine. Um, I've, you know, I've read a few books too. Um, the Intelligent Investor is a huge book I really like. Um, and, uh, definitely, you know, people like Wes Hall, uh, mm-hmm. definitely also make me more encouraged. They, they encourage me when, um, I'm in this type of space. Yes. Uh, because I've worked on Bay Street for a year. Um, Bay Street's like the, the Canadian Wall Street. Yes. And capital markets. And you, you definitely feel like, you know, you're the only one there yeah, sometimes, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And even though they all mean well, I've never had any negative experience. Everyone means well. They've been very supportive. It's just that you always feel like, well, I don't, generally fit in yes right with this lifestyle this culture whatever the case is and it's just discouraging when you know you're the only one of who you are is there Mm -hmm. but when you start seeing like guys like west hall who are at the top of the top yes yes. and on top of that he's not just there you see him on dragon's den saying like you know what i'm going to say yes to you just because everyone said no to me in my past and i think there's something in you where if i give you a yes you can make something of it like he's not just at the top chilling he's at the top giving Yeah, yeah and um you know we see that with his a uh, company called We Shall Investments. And then now we're seeing guys like Travel with the Drive Group, you know, uh, Tafari Bailey yep. uh, to, as well. And uh, just seeing, you know, people who I can relate more to in this space, you know, provides more encouragement. Just like seeing guys like Lewis Hamilton in okay. racing, right? Um, yes, he came from like a very rare um, way how he got into racing, but he's there nonetheless. 100%. And, you know, it's, it's definitely encouraging because you feel like, well, okay, there are guys like me there. You know, it mm-hmm. is possible, mm-hmm. right? Just like, for example, why do we think basketball and football is dominated by black culture? Yeah. It's because it's so inspiring when you see like, someone that who you can like relate you. to. It looks like you. Someone who's been where you've been. Someone yeah. who's lived where you live. Yeah. It's, he's, he's at there. He's at the top. And also, even to make another point, even with the basketball and the football, it's, um, it's a lower barrier to entry, right? So I feel like with what you're doing and you're helping people uh, with their financial education and uh, their finances in general, I feel like race car can be the new standard, right? What do you think? Who knows, right? <laughs> we can definitely make it all accessible. It's like back in the day, they used to say cash is king. Yeah. If that's true, then credit is definitely the emperor. Uh, we like know that. that credit is the emperor, right? So by providing more opportunity, 
um, and by not just preaching. You know, our generation, we've been preached our whole life. Yes. Let's be real, <laughs> yeah. right? We've been preached our whole life. And what we need now, we need actionable steps. 100%. We, we need people actually doing what they're talking about, right? So, and that's what I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be providing um, a YouTube video or a, a show where I'm going to be very transparent. I'm going to show my, my financial situation. And I'm going to show how I'm building it with Rentproof. I love very that. Very transparent. I love I'm going to be posting my bank statements. You'll I see everything, that. right? When does that start? It'll start soon enough. No hard date, date yeah. yet. Yeah. And uh, the reason why I do this is because growing up, it's been taboo talking about money. You know, mm-hmm. you don't ask your Especially mom how much family, you make. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> you don't ask. You don't ask, right? Yeah. And um, I understand why, because, you know, you don't want your kid to be ashamed or whatever the case is. But if you don't talk about our problem, how are you going to figure out a solution? Exactly. You know? Exactly. So that's why I'm trying to make it more acceptable, more comfortable to talk about money. I'm mm-hmm. not saying tell everyone how much you make in your situation, mm-hmm. but for example, if my friend is struggling financially, I want him coming to me saying, hey, you know, Toka, I'm, I'm in this type of situation, what would you do? But nine times out of 10, we won't even do that with our good friends because yeah. it's uncomfortable, mm-hmm. right? And- It's um, to break that stigma, to be honest. Very tough. So I can't tell people to do it. I can just show them. Show them I'm going to do it. I love that. So the YouTube uh, is a new channel or what's going on? Oh, it's not going to be a channel. I might, I might even post on someone else's channel. Yeah. I'm just going to make the video, right? I love that. And we um, we we'll need take that. it from there. We need that. So last question. Uh, on this show, we like to make predictions. Mm. So in five years, I want to play this back, okay? Okay. I'm like, Toka, he did, he did say he was going to do that. Where do you see yourself in five years? Five years, I see myself as a professional race car driver, <sighs> driving GT3 cars. Yep. And you know what my main sponsor is going to be? Who? Remproof. Ah, spon- well, that makes sense. Jeez, okay, five years, professional car driver, sponsored by Remproof. And in five years, that. when I'm there, we'll be playing this episode again. Ah, I love that. So, Toka, can you let everybody know uh, where where you can be contacted and how to follow your movement? Yeah, very simple. If you're interested in Remproof, uh, our Instagram is remproof.co. Our website is www.remproof.co. If you're interested in my racing, my Instagram is Toka Murphy and my website is tokamurphy.com. Uh, okay, I love that. Thank you. I want to I wanna extend my thank you. Um, I really uh, inspired. I'm really inspired to what you're doing and uh, we will be following all, all, all along now. So mm. if, if, if we can support you in any type of way, just obviously hit us up and we want to see you win and we want to see you win that contest. So thank you. Uh, yeah, this episode will be out in time so you can get those likes, those comments so you can hopefully get, uh, win that contest. So again, thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you very much, man. Um, thank you. Hey. Choo, choo, choo. Everything black on black. If I study that facts on facts.